There's a Minecraft server that has changed my life more than anything else in the world. Today we're going to talk about the good times, the terrible times, but why the Dream SMP means so much to me. My name is Tommy and this is a tribute to Dream SMP. I've always loved Minecraft SMPs. I've tried to enjoy single player so many times, but I just get bored. Even six years ago, when I was 12, back on my Xbox 360, I'd never play Minecraft by myself. My friends would be on my world where I'd make them go through hell. Because in my eyes, that's what Minecraft is about. That simple conflict that comes with having more diamonds than your friend. The rules you can break if someone's pissed you off. Look, I've never been a good builder or very creative. Every house I make is the exact same, but knowing that I can work with other people on the server to make the experience better, that's what I love about Minecraft. It's social. It's a real place. So when I found Hypixel, that changed everything. Hypixel was more than an SMP. It was a mega server. It had hierarchy, ranks, lobbies you could make friends in, competitive games you could make enemies in. This server was my foray into the Minecraft community. I discovered the big dogs, the people I wanted to be like someday, and that glorious crimson rank I could only dream of having. You needed 30,000 subscribers to get YouTube rank on Hypixel. And from then on, that was my only goal in life. I played on Hypixel for years and I loved every second of it. Grinding, streaming, meeting new people, getting closer and closer to one day being one of the big dogs. This was the dream and slowly it was coming true. But then a few years into Hypixel, I found SMP Live. SMP Live was nothing like Hypixel. It wasn't about competitiveness or mini games. It was a vanilla stripped down Minecraft server and had an emphasis on comedy. I'd never seen anything like it. Through the server, I found my three favorite YouTubers, but none stood out more than Jay Schlatt. I would watch him for hours on end. The timing of his jokes, the bombastic personality, just how effortlessly funny he was. I wanted to be just like him. I wanted to join SMP Live so bad that I made a video three years ago about it. Don't, don't, don't watch it. It's not good. Almost a year after I made that video, I got invited to SMP Earth. SMP Earth was Wilbur Sutt, one of my other favorite YouTubers' newest project. As SMP Live was coming to a close, Wilbur wanted another space for creators to come together, and this was it. A huge map replicating Earth with modded planes, a live updating map, and Technoblade? I had to get in. This was my chance. <laughs> and I did. I barely made it into that server, joining five minutes before the invites closed because I begged my friend who was in it. But that server made all the difference to my life. Now, every day I was streaming SMP Earth the second I got home from school. I really should have been studying for my exams, but streaming YouTube came first. I was definitely being irresponsible. But through the server, I learned so much about YouTube, met so many cool people. It was great. But just as abruptly as it started, <sighs> SMP Earth came to an end. And looking back, SMP Earth didn't have the same spark SMP Live did. People had done servers before, and the existence of them was getting tiring. They all started to feel the same. The problem wasn't the people or Minecraft. It was just the timing. The age of SMPs was coming to a close, and I'd missed the boat. Even though I discovered so much about YouTube and, and streaming, I'd never be among the big dogs. The clock had ran out. I couldn't help thinking every day while I was at school, what if I'd have worked a little bit harder, or been less cringy, or born a few years earlier? Would I have been an SMP Live? Would I have been one of the big YouTubers? Knowing I might not ever be able to be one of the big dogs, well, I guess it got me down. But as the pandemic begun and all my exams were cancelled, I knew I had one last chance to really make this work. Yes, the age of SMPs was over, but maybe I could still find something. Anything! And then... I met Dream. <laughs> now, we didn't really click at first. He actually uh, ignored my first message. Dream was a new YouTuber in the Minecraft space. He'd figured out that people resonate most with the super simple, basic content. You didn't need a high budget. You didn't need lots of editing. You just needed some friends and a cool idea. He started making Minecraft manhunt videos. The premise being some friends chase him around a Minecraft world while he pulls off insane plays. Even though it was easy to follow, it felt super grand. Like you were watching a movie, but also just some friends dicking around. Although it was exciting, it didn't give Dream a lot of space to be himself. So much of the videos were focused on the Minecraft that it's personality didn't shine through. So to combat this, on April 24th, 2020, Dream started streaming on a new Minecraft world with two of his friends. Now, this server wasn't anything special. 
In fact, it was boring. Dream's reluctance to add any mods to keep the server vanilla made for very slow, talkative streams. Even though Dream and his pals were having fun, the server definitely didn't stand out. But then a big change happened. <laughs> I asked to join. Dream, without hesitation, said no. I'd be too chaotic, I'd ruin the relaxed vibe, and quite frankly, I didn't know anyone on there well enough. But after mulling it over for a few weeks, I think Dream realized that's what the server needed. It needed unpredictability. It needed chaos. On the 4th of July, 2020, Dream nervously invited me to join his world. And oh boy, I didn't hold back. Five minutes on the server, I'd killed George. 10 minutes on the server, I'd started a war. 20 minutes on the server, I'd been banned. But Dream didn't keep me banned, oh no, no. Much to everyone's surprise, Dream liked this element of chaos. So he started adding some of my friends. We played this server every day for weeks. Me and Turbo logging on every night to tell jokes and piss people off. And viewers were going up too. I'd never had more than a few thousand people watching me at once. But now me and everyone else were starting to hit five six, sometimes 8,000 viewers. It was surreal. During these early days of just pissing people off, I found the most important item I'd ever find in Minecraft. It wasn't some insane sword or an overpowered bow. No, it was music discs. My music discs. These discs became so genuinely important to me. One of the first things me and Turbo did together on the server was listen to the discs. It was such a real sweet moment. Each time I played those discs, I felt weirdly like I was able to take in to understand the experience I was having. I know that's crazy, but I, I mean it. Those quiet moments that really contrasted such loud, energy-filled streams, they meant a lot to me. However, knowing all of this, Dream did the unthinkable. He stole both of my discs. He fucked up. Before I knew it, me and Turbo were head to head against him. Oh, and Dream, by the way, it's worth mentioning, is one of the greatest Minecraft players of all time. We ended up night after night brawling it out in fucking awesome, genuinely difficult Minecraft PvP. And holy shit, did you just see that block clutch? This server was amazing. It was a mix of the combat I'd loved on Hypixel and the chaos I'd loved from SMP Live. It was authentic, natural. You couldn't make this up. Quite frankly, you couldn't script this. Until we did! After a few weeks on the server, one of my good friends, Wilbur, joined. He'd see me dicking around, and although he was quite frankly unimpressed, he saw the potential the server had to offer. There was no fixation on views or even quality. It was just a Minecraft world full of nerds that are way too committed to this video game. On the 24th of July, 2020, I got this DM on Discord. Your life, tell me we're gonna sell drugs. Yep. Okay. This is when shit hit the fan! A drug cartel, it... well, it didn't go to plan. Me and Wilbur imprisoned by Sapnap not even 20 minutes into the stream, and genuinely, it was a mess. That's when we realized we didn't have to be in the Dream SMP. What if we made our own land, our own SMP, where we could sell drugs? Where Sapnap and Dream had no way of stopping us. We created a place that embodied all our ideals of freedom, the Manberg. We built walls, recruited troops, and even had babies? What? This was a nation. Unfortunately, Dream didn't like this one bit. He hated that we defied his authority. He really fell into the role of the fucking evil antagonist. And a few nights later, Dream began to destroy our new home and left an incredibly aggressive message. I want to see white flags, white flags outside your base by tomorrow at dawn or you are dead. It was genuinely nerve wracking. These next few days were the most on the edge of my seat I've ever been while playing a video game. I even woke up early each morning to plan secret tunnels under our Minecraft base. Listen, I was taking this seriously. And although it was just Minecraft, it was now the most important thing in my life that dream wouldn't take the Manberg. We were a well put together nation, all on the same page, and there was no chance Dream could take us down from any angle. Certainly not the inside. Eric. Whoa! 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 Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Down with the revolution, boys! Whoa! It was never meant to be. <sighs> So we got betrayed by one of our own. I mean, I knew Dream was now evil, but convincing a member of our nation to destroy us from within? He was a psychopath. And even worse, in order to save Lamanberg, I had to give up my discs to Dream, since that's the only thing he wanted more than Lamanberg. I was heartbroken, distraught, but most of all, I was angry. Dream would have to pay. Then a few months went by and the server sort of changed. It stopped being about these great, fully improvised lore streams and had a, 
a more scripted feel. Before each major stream, Wilbur would write up a really complicated treatment that let us know the plot points we had to hit. Otherwise, the stream would have been a failure. It was a lot of pressure. The thing is though, this change wasn't bad. It made the server even cooler. I remember running home from college, booting up my OBS, <laughs> skimming through whatever Wilbur had wrote for us today, and just going live. That simplicity, that wonder of what will happen next was so exciting. Yes, the streams were scripted. Yes, there was more pressure, but things still went wrong. We still improvised, made shit up. The spark was still there, and planning out the streams more only added to it. Hundreds of thousands of people were tuning in, viewers ramping up to crazy amounts. But the momentum didn't stop there. The server kept ramping up in popularity now, meaning there were constantly more expectations, more demand, and a whole lot more of you lot. I won't lie, I was beginning to get seriously overwhelmed. The expectations began to pile up on me, the streams got planned out to a now stressful degree of detail, and it was just a lot. It was getting too much. But in a brief moment of reflection, I realized how far I'd actually come. I was now playing Minecraft, making videos with my heroes, Wilbur Soot, Technoblade, and even Jay Schlatt. <sighs> Let's pause. This, however cringy it might seem, is my genuine hero. You might already know this because this video is completely inspired by him, but Schlatt is my idol. In the early quarantine, I'd spend every night watching all of his channels. I was in love with his content. I wanted to be just like him. Now, during the quarantine, Schlatt followed me back. Probably a mistake on his end because I messaged him. A lot, a lot, lot. Some might say I was a little clingy, that I was a child, that they'd be right. Just as the Dream SMP was beginning to get huge, while I was live, Schlapp finally messaged me back and joined the server. This was the most surreal moment, I mean, probably of my entire life up to this point. I was in quarantine, so I wasn't getting recognized. I only just started to understand the gravity of everything happening around me. But this moment made it all clear. My dream had came true. The feeling, the reality of walking next to him, doing jokes with him and Wilbur. I was included in my favorite YouTuber's friendship. It just, <sighs> I couldn't have asked for anything more. Seeing that Minecraft sunset with Schlatt, who inspired so much of what I do, that's all I needed. If it had all stopped then, in, in that moment, I would have been happy. But it was not slowing down. I now had a few million subscribers, and every day I went into college, I was getting more and more people coming up to me. I was not at all ready for what was happening. I tried to put that past me, because no matter the numbers or recognition, we're still just some people making up a story. And I knew my story needed to take a new direction. In the Dream SMP, you play a role. My character, Tommy, is a version of myself. However, as time had gone on, my character's rivalry with Dream had gone far out of hand. Dream's character had really messed with me. He trapped me in exile, made my friends turn on me, he tormented me with war time and time again. Given this had been happening for six straight months, my character was coming to the end of the line. But now, to match the real world expectations too, I knew what it was time for. It was time for a change. It was time for a finale. I spent a bit of time writing out a few of my own arcs, but I knew for the finale it had to be different. This time I needed to go bigger. I needed to write a huge, standalone stream that would bring my character arc to a peak, and that was something only Wilbur had ever done. With almost no experience, I opened Google Docs and wrote out a plan for the Dream SMP finale. You know, this whole server had started with me and Turbo fighting Dream, because he stole my music discs. Here's the thing though, even after six months of complex law writing, I'd still never retrieve my discs. Now, these weren't just discs anymore. They were a symbol of victory, of closure. My character, and quite frankly me, rely quite a lot on the safety of those Minecraft items. Now it was the time for a final stand. Dream had given us a compass to the disc's final location, knowing me and Turbo weren't strong enough to take him down by ourselves. Immediately, we ventured out on one final voyage to get them back. Everyone on the server waved us goodbye, since they knew we were sailing straight into our deaths. Me and Turbo scaled the mountain, only to find Dream standing there with my discs and his netherite axe. It was a challenge ever so reminiscent of how the server first started. We knew what we had to do. An old-fashioned, back-to-basic Minecraft duel. This stream, this brawl, was awesome. Dream started to fucking show off by playing the discs mid-fight, but I outplayed him! I got it back! I completely forgot about the story stuff. My inner Skywars player kicked in, and I was still hitting block clutches! <sighs> but despite all of this, Dream defeated us. Took back the discs from me one final time and decided he was gonna take our last cannon lives too. Me and Turbo would be gone and I'd never win. That is where 
my story ends. But I can't lie. I watched Avengers Endgame about a week before writing, so the whole server arrived through a portal, saving us at the very last minute. There was no plagiarism. It's 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 completely different plot. With only one canon life left, Dream begged for mercy, and because I'm a good guy, I gave it to him. Dream was put in prison forever, and me and Turbo had finally won, which left us right back where we started, on the bench, listening to my music discs. That night was truly amazing. The stream had over 650,000 people watching. At the beginning of the SMP, only six months earlier, I was getting 2,000 viewers uh, at most. Twitch had never seen anything like this. The most someone had had was Ninja playing Fortnite with Drake, who, who literally tweeted out his stream, and I broke that record. I couldn't believe the amount of people that wanted to see the end of my story. I still can't believe it. I got awarded a world record for that stream. Yes, a Guinness world record for a Twitch stream. But what? I was so amazed, shocked, and thankful for how Twitch started to treat me. Like, are you seeing this? And my life was turning around. You see, I was in my third lockdown now, and it was fucking rough. I wasn't allowed outside. I couldn't see my crush at the time, which was starting to go really well, and I was just miserable. But seeing how many people cared about the thing we were making, that changed my life. I had no confidence at the beginning of the SMP. I didn't like how I looked or how I sounded. But this SMP, you all taught me, it was okay to just be me. That that's enough. The Dream SMP was a perfect storm of everything I could ever want, and it made me happier than I could ever imagine. But around then, after that stream, I think, well for me, the server gradually lost something. It lost what it first started with, that indescribable spark. I'd stopped joining the server because I wanted to, or because I was excited to play, it just became routine. The server almost felt like a museum, the sheer level of expectation from the audience was so intimidating, I felt too nervous to destroy anything. I was worried about the backlash from blowing up someone's Minecraft base. This time was stressful, and as viewers went up, I felt a constant pressure to live up to my last stream. When I saw that number drop, I knew I was doing something wrong. I didn't feel like I was good enough. It made no sense to me that millions of people were watching me, but just me. I refused to make any content by myself. I always had to have another person in the video because I wasn't sure of myself. Every decision I made, I ran by someone because in all honesty, I was scared, scared that all of this, everything I'd worked for, would disappear any second. The success of the server became its detriment. Everyone became busy and much more successful, and we all started on different things. There wasn't enough time for the story anymore. Hell, I stopped caring too. I was vlogging, hanging with my new friends, and the server was left behind. <sighs> I can't say I don't miss the simple days. And streaming wasn't about viewers or quality. It was just fun. No matter what, if I'd have had a shit, an anxious day, I was just starting college, so there were a lot of those. Or, or a great day, it'd always end by joining the server and just letting that weird story take me away. Spending time every night telling jokes with some of my closest friends in the world and the coolest people I've ever met. It meant everything to me. Sure, it was just a Minecraft server, but this was real. This is what mattered and that I think we all started to lose sight of that. Most of us stopped playing the server. We were done with it. Except one player, who despite everyone's lack of motivation, kept streaming, kept coming up with new story ideas, and kept grinding. That was until about 13 months ago. Because around that time, we found out the Technoblade had cancer. The Techno's unwillingness to show any signs of being affected by it made all my worries vanish. We joked about the dumbest way to clickbait it. I, I mean, it didn't even feel real. It didn't feel real. As soon as I heard the news, the very first thing I did was log on to the SMP. When Tenoblade joined SMP Earth for the last time, he left one final chest in his base with a goodbye note. I just hoped he'd done the same. 
I searched the server for so long that day, looking for any note, any last thing I might have missed. In his base, the places he went most, his last log on spot, but there was nothing. Even though I was certain there was no secret note he'd left, I kept searching. Until, finally, I sat down on the bench, watched the sunset, and listened to the discs. And then, I let it all out. Technoblade is the coolest fucking person I've ever known. I remember the morning he added me on Discord. I, I was walking to school in the freezing cold, hands shaking, but it didn't matter because I was actually meeting Technoblade, the king of the Minecraft community. And it was the biggest honor anyone could receive from being one of his biggest fans to one of his mates. It was such a pleasure to have been in his life. Every stream he joined, every video he was in, he lit up the entire room. And I'm forever grateful for the amount of time he'd give up just to come and make jokes with us. We were the gang, and he was, and always will be, my hero. This Minecraft server has taught me so much about who I am today, and continues to help me discover who I want to be. Even when we stopped playing as much, the community kept us going. They started a new Minecraft era. The incredible art posted every day by you guys. The animation helped me see, reflect, and take in this server, this experience. Thank you so much for making that. It means so much. I'm also so fucking proud of my friends. Being able to see each and every one of them grow, all of us in this boat together, it was the best. This whole experience can be super lonely, but because of my friends, it never, ever was. And I wouldn't have wished to spend it with anyone else. I've had so much fun on this server, and even though I thought it was for quite some time, it's definitely not finished. As time goes on, I, I think we're all realizing how fucking lucky we are to have been a part of this stupid miracle, and I really shouldn't take this server for granted. Things are changing. We're all getting older. Oh, I mean, look at Phil. But, but, but just knowing that for the rest of my life, there will always be this world. I can run around and remember and relive all the memories we made. That's so much more than enough.